What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. It's a review of Sheffield United 3, Chelsea 0 and fuck me if, if we didn't shit the bed today. Today was a shambles from start to finish, from the lineup to the way we started the match, to the way we adapted in the second half. So the way we played in the second half to the way we finished it was all just a shambles from start to finish. And I'm not going to lie, we've probably bottled top four. Looking at the way the games are set out, looking at the games we have in hand, looking at the games United have in hand, looking at the fact that Manchester City may have managed to salvage Champions League football for the next two years despite all of the bullshit that they've done over the last couple of years. It is what it is. I guess we bottled top four, which is... I'm not gonna lie, it's so frustrating because we've been sitting comfortably in top four since what, October, November? I think we were what, 10, 15 points clear of Manchester United, we're also 10 points away from Leicester City at some points in the season, which has just shown how many, how badly the teams around us have dropped points, but it's also showed how badly we've capitalized on it. And there was a big chance it was going to come and bite us on the arse sooner or later, our inconsistent home form, or our poor record against the bottom half of the league. And look, just at the end, it's all come to bite us in the arse. Today was just a shambles. I'll be real, I said, at the start, of, I said in my preview that we should play four at the back. In hindsight, completely wrong. I will say in hindsight, Frank Lampard's game management was also poor. I think, personally, we should have started with 3-4-3. We shouldn't have reverted to it at 2-0 down because it doesn't make sense in terms of game management. How are you going to be 2-0 down and you add another defender? It doesn't make sense. I get what Frank Lampard was trying to do, but it was 45 minutes too late, in my opinion. That entire game was just shambolic. And to be honest, the first thing I want to say is I want to go through the first goal. And I get Kepa's had a poor season. I really get that Kepa hasn't been good this season and he has got so much criticism from these fans but no one talks about the defense in the same breath though the defense was embarrassing for the first goal it was literally like the Aston Villa goal yet again good save from Kepa couldn't do anything on the rebound because it already committed to the first one but what was the defense doing looking like weeping angels just standing there doing nothing playing freeze for no reason and it's been this poor reaction time that's cost us so many times I don't get why people have been on this Kurt Zuma hype train over the last week or so because of a tackle against Crystal Palace. Like, I was gassed because of it, but I never let it get to a certain point because here's the thing. All of our defenders ever look good in patches these, this season, but no one's ever looked consistent over a long period of time. Tamori had this period where he looked like the best defender in this club. Rudiger had a period where he looked like the best defender at this club. Christensen had a period where he looked like the best defender at the club. So did Zuma. You know what that means? That doesn't mean that they're all pretty good in means that they're all inconsistent and this is why I've been saying we need a defender with experience first instead of a youth player that has the potential to be up there because that's still going to take a little bit of time to mesh in. We need someone with fucking experience, someone who can lead these players and to be honest in centre back no one's really doing any of the leadership. Andreas Christensen, he had a shambolic performance in the first half. Lampard, I think the best decision he made that entire game was taking off Andreas Christensen at halftime because his performance was a joke. If it wasn't for the first goal and him completely falling asleep, it's the second goal where he's marking shadows for McGoldrick. Or is it McGoldrick or McBurney? One or the other. Regardless, I'm bored of that result. The second goal was an embarrassment. Willian, who everyone has been hyping yet again because of a purple patch. Like, you lot haven't fallen for this the last five or six times this has happened. If you lot have fallen for a William run of form in big 2020, you should be ashamed of yourself. Because it was so predictable. It was so fucking predictable that they do the same thing that he did 18 months ago. He'd have a decent run of form. And look, it's just gone back to being pathetic again. But looking back at the way we set up, we set up right into Sheffield United's hands. Sheffield United are a very good defensively solid team. And it was pretty bait to see. And what did we do? We played an attacking style of play and we played right into their hands for the counter attack. The third goal, Rudiger and Alonso were brought on so we could play five at the back. In my opinion, if we were playing five at the back, they should have been on the pitch to begin with. But Rudiger for the third goal, what was that recovery tackle? What the hell was that recovery tackle? Literally played into McGoldrick's hands. It was a joke from start to finish and I'm not going to lie, we have thrown top four completely out of the hat. Um, is there any players I want to actually say anything about? Jorginho, 
Jorginho, fuck me, today was a bad game for him. And he just showed that he can't, maybe he can't really do this lone DM role that Frank Lampard wants to do. Maybe it worked under uh, Maurizio Sarri because it was a completely different style of play. But tonight he was just getting done and done and done and done. And low-key that feels like he was playing into the hands of why... Um, Frank Lampard was preferring Billy Gilmore because he's just that bit more athletic and Loki I think Billy Gilmore's injury has saved Jorginho's Chelsea career for the time being but Injuries have been a huge problem for us this season. Tammy Abraham as well, before I go into player rating. He has had a poor performance today. And you know what? He's had too many ghost performances. I always say with Tammy Abraham, it's his first season, so I give him the benefit of the doubt. But he has been poor for too long today. And I'll be real, Giroud has just shown yet again why he should be our starting striker. We didn't have any real goal threat until the 78th minute, but we looked a lot more threatening with Giroud on the pitch. And even the same way we're doing that, why did Lampard take Pulisic off? Why did Lampard really take Christian Pulisic off when he was the, our only real attacking output? Seriously, so much about this game just baffles me and I think it's just been a disaster from start to finish. But let's just go straight into the player ratings. Kepa couldn't do anything about the first goal. Second goal, I'll be really could have jumped for that. Third goal, I think it's more of a defensive error. Still conceded three goals, so I'm just going to give him a five. Uh, Reese James really didn't look into it today. I think the only real good defender today was Aspel Equator. James has looked pretty out of it since he's come back from lockdown, and we really need to see him get back into fitness soon, so I'm going to give him a five as well. Christensen gets a two, and he's lucky to even get a two from me. He was you know what? He's getting a zero, in fact. Yeah, no, 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 no. I might push to a 1. I'll give Christian to the 1 because it's not the worst performance I've seen in the Chelsea shirt. But it is getting very close. That 45 minutes was just straight up shambolic for him, from him. He was at fault for both of the goals in my opinion. It was a poor, poor performance. 1 from him. Kurt Zuma also kind of falling asleep for the first goal. I didn't think he was that good to be honest either. His forward passes weren't that good. And this, to be honest, this is also the reason why I was a bit wary about overhyping Kurt Zuma too much. Because he is still shaky on the ball. He's not perfect. Everyone was hyping up his tackle against Palace. But his recovery tackles are one of his strengths. Him on the ball is one of his weaknesses and it showed today. So Zuma gets a four from me. Azpilicueta gets a six. The only decent defender that we had today in my opinion. Um, Jorginho... Maybe at some points there were players not showing themselves for him. At some points he was ignoring runners. He really struggled protecting the back line today. And it just wasn't a good performance for Jorginho. So I'm going to give him a four. Ross Barkley, zero creativity from him today. He's getting a four from me as well. Mason Mount really shouldn't have tried to play the ball out for that first goal. But I can't really just solely blame him. Because there were so many other factors to it as well. He still should have done better. But going forward, I think he struggled as well on the overload. It wasn't his best performance since lockdown by a long shot. I'm going to give him a four, I guess. I don't think he was any more as productive as Ross Barkley, if I'm being really real. So but they both get fours. William gets a three. Shocking defensively, offered nothing going forward and struggles against a low block is what it is with William. You get you get one good performance of him. You get a couple more dead ones. Three from him. Pulisic, six. Only real attacking output came from him during the match. He really tried, but it was one man against three for most of the times and he was on the ball, so it was going to be a struggle from him anyway. Six for him. Abraham gets a two. Really, yeah, he did not have a good game today. He struggled getting the ball out of his feet. He struggled with balance. It just really struggled keeping up right, if I'm being honest. It wasn't a good performance from him as a focal point. Moving on to defence, Rudiger came in and he didn't help the defence, especially with that third goal, so he's getting a two from me. Marcus Alonso helped a little bit more going forward, but I think it was just too little too late with him. I'll give him a three, three, four. I'll give him a four. I don't think he was that bad. Um, Loftus-Cheek didn't really do much, um, not, not giving him a rating. Kovacic didn't play, but um, he really should have because a 3-4-3 is just built for the kovacic Jorginho pivot, so he really should have played. Um, who else? Olivier Giroud. We only really started having output when he came onto the field, so he gets a 5 as well. But yeah, I've done my player ratings, I've done my review, and I've done my Blues Fans TV thing. I'm glad I ain't done the watch along because I'd have your dars moaning that I'd be getting pissed off about the game. They'll probably be moaning about this game too. I'm going to try and drink to forget this one. Like, subscribe, pick... <laughs>